Good morning. This morning I'm going to show you how to use SketchUp to convert a 2D drawing that you might find in the book like the one mentioned in the write-up and create a 3D model. And once you have the 3D model you can use the 3D model for dimensioning and creating shop drawings and also for creating full-size templates that you can take in the shop and trace and cut pieces out. The book that we're studying this morning is a book from my library and it's called The Book of Shaker Furniture by John Cassay. In it there are hundreds of pieces of shaker furniture and about every fifth one has a 2D drawing and the drawing quality is quite good. In fact I would call it reproduction quality. So I'm going to try and maintain that quality as I create the 3D SketchUp model. And we'll do this in several parts, probably in two or three parts. And at the end of each week, when I post that part, I'll give you the SketchUp model uh, to that point so that you can take it and study it and what have you. Okay, so let's get started. This week I'm going to use two plugins. One of them is a plugin that I generated, and it's right here. It's this plugin right here. It's called Construction Plus. You can see it right up here, the title Construction Plus. And in the write up, I have given you a link where you can download it. I'm going to use a couple pieces of, a couple tools from this Construction Plus toolbar. One is this grid, and the other is the construction line. The other tool I'm going to use is over here on the right, and this is called BZB as in beta, Z as in zebra, BZ underscore toolbar. It stands for Bezier toolbar, and with it you can make all kinds of curves. Very, very uh, you know, non-circular, non-regular curves. I'll show you very quickly how to use a couple of this, these uh, tools, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time describing the tools. You can learn that from other posts that I have. But um, we're going to use these two things to create the pedestal this morning, which is, let's see if I can, um, well, I'll show you the finished pedestal at the moment. This is the turned, you'll you'll turn end up turning this on a lathe in the shop. It's a turned pedestal that's going to be, that's going to, the, the legs are going to be attached down here in the tabletop here. Um, so we're going to deal with just this today. And um, we'll start off with using the grid tool. So let me just show you quickly how to use the grid tool. I click on the grid and then the origin. Oh, by the way, I am looking at the front view right now. So if I click on the grid and then the origin, I can come out along the red axis and click, come up all, along the blue axis and click, and I've got a grid. If I choose that grid and right click, you can't see it. I have to bring it up. I have to come up a little closer here if I can. Let me just pan this over. Now I can choose it. Right click and you can see this little command down here, Edit Grid. That brings up this little dialog box and on it you'll find four parameters NY, DX, NX, DY. NY means how many grids or how many spaces do you want along the y-axis which is the vertical axis and NX asks how many spaces do you want along the x-axis and the DY, DX and DY ask how big do you want those spaces so let's say I want um, oh, 30 spaces along the y-axis and 15 spaces along the x-axis. 
and let's say I want them ha um, one inch apart so we'll leave the one inches here if I click that notice the grid changed and there I have it I have 30 one inch spaces along the y-axis 15 one inch spaces along the x-axis it's that simple now I can come in here and I can draw lines that represent curves or approximations of curves and I'll show you how to do that later okay so that's the grid tool today we're going to use it um, in a very very simple way I'm going to have one grid along the Y or x-axis I'm sorry one grid along the x-axis that's one inch and 20 grids along the y-axis one inch apart so let's get at that and erase all this and I'm actually gonna I, I already did this offline to save time so let me just bring the grid up I have this layer called construction pedestal when you use the grid tool or any of my construction plus tools it automatically creates a layer called construction with a dollar sign at each end and any tool you use here um, will end up putting well not any tool I should say the um, construction line construction point draw normal and grid will end up on a layer called construction I can change that name anytime I want like I did with this construction pedestal I drew a bunch of stuff that ended up on a construction layer and then I wanted to change the name of that layer and this is what I drew and um, using the grid and I'll show you what this is if I zoom in here this is very roughly the outline of the pedestal you can probably see it roughly here and if I zoom in more closely you'll see starting at the bottom I have a grid one inch wide and it goes up from the red axis every one inch one two three all the way up to 20 inches up here so that gives me a one inch mark all the way up and using the table that's in the write up I created little lines here construction lines with construction points at each end using my construction line tool and that's just a matter of clicking at where the one inch line here intersects this axis coming out some dimension whatever it is and I just type it into the VCB um, it, I'll, I'll create one that's outside the grid right at the moment I'll call it uh, 1.5 inches and you can see what happens it just puts a construction point one and a half inches out from this axis now remove that and I've done that for every point in the table if I bring the table up here for a moment you notice this is the table of radii here's the column inches from the bottom you, you'll notice that there are a number of places where I've got radius that are not on one inch marks now, I've had to create special construction lines for those particular places you'll also notice there's some places where I don't have a diameter and that's because in the book there was no data for that diameter so I just estimated it and I gave you the radius over here but nonetheless you have a bunch of dimensions most of which are on the grid and some of which are not and the radius and so using this table let me go back now to my drawing using this table I've created all these points and if I zoom in here by the way you'll see the points that do not have starting crosses starting 
construction points are the points where there was no date in the book and I estimated them. And I just left those construction points off just so you would know that. Now having done that, what I can do is first of all take my pencil tool or line tool. I can draw a line from here to here. And I'm actually going to come all the way down here uh, on the uh, this line right here. Click, come out to this construction point. Now everything else is a curve, so I'm not going to do anything with the rest of it at the moment. This is going to be one half of the cross section of the pedestal. So I'm going to draw a straight line down here. This will be the center axis of the pedestal. Go down to the origin and click. Come out here and click. And notice I've got to zoom in here a lot because I want this point here. I don't want the one inch mark. I want this point right here. And I'm going to come up to that point and then up straight up again along the blue axis until I touch this grid line. Then I'm going to come out to this point right there. Having done that, everything else is a curve. And so I'm going to have to use the Bezier tool on these curves. All right, so let's get at that. Let's zoom in here a lot. Now the Bezier curve I'm going to have to use twice. Once to create this curve, and I'll stop there. Then I'll start there again and create a curve that comes from there down to here. The reason I have to do that is because this is called a discontinuity in the curve right there. It bends very sharply and a Bezier tool will not make a very sharp bend so we have to do it twice. We have to create two curves. When you use the Bezier tool it's got a bunch of tools with a bunch of different type curves. The one I like to use is called the cubic Bezier curve and it's very simple. You start with this point, or start with this tool, go to this point, make sure it says end point. Now go to this one and make sure it says guide point. Click. This one says guide point. Click. Guide point. Click. Guide point. Click. Now this time I want to end the curve. So I right click out here and I say done and exit tool. Now if I look at that curve, it's pretty ugly. It's not what I want. I've got to fix it up. So the way I do that is use the Edit tool. First thing I do is select that curve with the Select tool. And I come over here to the Edit tool. Um, down here, the Edit tool right here on the bottom. And once I do that, I can come over and zoom in and notice that I want to pull this point out a little bit. I'll start with that. That looks pretty good. Now I want to probably move this one up a bit. And look at that curve and you can do this, you can move these points around quite a bit until you're really happy with that curve. I'm not going to do a lot of this editing but I'll, I'll say at the moment that that looks pretty good. So I just click out here in white space. I now have that curve. Now I can go back to my cubic bezier curve right here and finish this up. I'm going to start with this point right here. Go to each point up the line. Make sure that I see an inference engine point. And I just keep going. Looking for that inference engine point.
and I got my last point here, it's endpoint. I come out here, right click, and say done and exit tool. And notice the moment I exited that tool, I got a face, which is basically the one half cross section of the pedestal. Okay, now since everything I did, um, I can get rid of my construction points by just clicking on this guy right here. And notice now I have a nice outline. Well now it's a simple matter. If I look at this in isometric view, it's a simple matter of taking the circle tool, going to the origin, and making sure I get the I'm going to come out here until I get a blue circle. I'm going to hold the shift key down and come to the origin. Click once. Come out along the red axis further than my this point here. I want to be outside of my um, cross section. And I'll click. doesn't matter what the radius is. I can get rid of this face here because I don't need it. And I want this path this outline of the circle. And now I can use the Follow Me tool. I click the Follow Me tool. This circle is deselected. I hover over this face. And when I see all these blue dots, I click once. Wait a second. And there you go. I have my pedestal. Notice, by the way, that it's all the faces are the wrong color. Not a problem. I triple click right click and say reverse faces now I don't need this circle anymore and if I want I can choose well I should at this point choose this whole thing right click and say make component I've already done that in this drawing and um, so I'm not going to do it again in fact I'm going to erase all of this because I've already done it and here's my cross section by the way and here's my pedestal and it's a component if I choose it you'll see it's a component so that's how we do the pedestal you can zoom in here orbit around see we got a nice shape Look at the bottom. And you'll notice, by the way, um, that the bottom is slightly smaller. This part here, which of course, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to put um, dovetail sockets here, three of them, 120 degrees apart. We'll do that next week. And the legs will have dovetail tails on them that'll slide up into those sockets. But we'll do that next week. For this week, this is a wrap, so I'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good week.